Good evening, team. It's August 2nd, Friday, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all on Monday at 10 a.m. for our training. But I'm going to tell you a couple things that have happened that I want to make you aware of before. The listing agreement has changed, it has been updated, and it has been added to our dot loop. So I want to make you aware of it in case you are going to be writing some new listing agreements this weekend. So without further ado, let's just jump on in and make sure you're aware of what is going on. So here we are. This is the new listing agreement. Again, we'll go through it in detail on Monday. But in the interim, this is the big changes. Page three for compensation. Section eight used to have to do with both sides, the listing side and the co-broke side. But let's look at it now. Sellers will compensate broker as specified below if a buyer is procured who is ready, willing, and able to purchase a property for any interest in the property on the terms of this agreement or any other terms acceptable to seller. Seller will pay broker as follows, a percentage of the total purchase price plus 395. This guys is in reference to our listing side. Okay, not the total anymore, not the listing side and the co-broke side. Now, Another change is this retained deposits. As consideration for the broker's services, broker is entitled to receive a percentage of all deposits that the seller retains as liquidated damages for the buyer's default in a transaction. It used to say if left bank, 50%. It no longer says if left blank. So it's up to you if you'd like to write a percentage here. You guys know we don't really keep a percentage, but that's up to you. Now, Section nine is new. It is a disclosure, simply explaining notice to sellers regarding buyer brokers. The buyer's broker, even if compensated by seller or broker, will provide services for the buyer. The seller is advised and is aware that the seller may, but is not required to compensate a buyer's broker upon closing. The seller may choose to enter into a separate written agreement to pay buyer's broker or may approve the broker, i.e. Premier Sotheby's in this case, to pay the buyer's broker in accordance with paragraph 10, which we'll look at in a moment. The seller also understands, A, the buyer's broker, in this case, Premier Sotheby's, may include this broker if the broker works with the buyer in this transaction. So we, for example, can double side, right? So we may be representing the seller as well as the buyer. If this occurs, B, during the transaction and the duration of this listing, the broker is entitled to the compensation in paragraph eight up here for representing the seller, right? Of course, because we did our listing. That's what we did. We promised that we'd represent them and we did for the services performed for the seller, as well as the buyer's broker compensation in paragraph 10, which we haven't discussed yet, for services performed for the buyer. The seller should therefore take into consideration when negotiating their compensation. Also, C, the broker may receive separate compensation from the buyer for services rendered to the buyer's broker. That means we're going to do a buyer broker agreement also as we need to with the buyer, right? Because when we show a property, put in an offer, what do we need to have? A buyer broker representation agreement, don't we? That means that that says how much they're paying us. So what if up here they were paying us, say, 3%? What if they were offering 2% for the co-broke side, but our buyer broker agreement said 3%? That means that we were getting 2% from the 3% from the list side, 2% from the buy side in terms of the seller, and then the buyer was going to give us another percent. So we could get that means commission for two parties from the seller and from the buyer. This is for the transaction brokerage to cover us so that we could get multiple commission from multiple parties. That's what this is about, okay? Now, compensation 10 to the buyer's broker. So this is explaining what the seller is authorizing us to do. 
Brokerage commissions are not set by law and are fully negotiable. We already knew that. The seller is approving the following. A, the seller is authorizing the broker to offer compensation to the buyer's broker in the amount of what percent or a flat rate, which we're not going to do, right? So this means that we would be using in this case in our listing agreement, and we'd have it in our dot loop, seller's broker to buyer's broker agreement, right? Because the seller is authorizing us to pay on the HUD, we would be giving them the commission. So if it was they were giving us 4%, they were giving them 3%, that's nice. We would write the 3% here and our 4% here, right? For example, okay? Now, this second one would be the seller's authorizing the broker, Premier Sotheby's, to offer compensation to the buyer's broker from the seller direct in the amount of either percentage or a flat rate. I don't know why we do that. This would be the form, which is also in our listing folder, seller to buyer's broker, okay? That's what this is in regards to. And the third option, which is not a great option, but not prohibited, of course, is always a, an option. No compensation is offered. That is the changes, so you are aware. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call, but we will be going through this in great depth again on Monday with our awesome cute cards for the buyer representation. I look forward to seeing you on Monday at 10 and Dr. Phillips or via Zoom, but in the interim, have a great weekend.